I resisted buying the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. Like many of you out there, I watched plenty of videos on YouTube about it, and the thought of buying it went in and out of my head multiple times. But nope, I let the videos flow, the reviews read, and the Twitter recommendations go past me. I don't really need it. I already have the keyboard folio case, so how much better could this possibly be? Well, the simple and expensive answer to that is a lot. This is the best keyboard ever made for the iPad, and the whole thing is probably the best accessory ever developed for the iPad Pro. But I've had my iPad attached to it for a few weeks and I've got to admit, my feelings on the whole thing is actually quite mixed and I wanted to explain why. Let's wind it back a little. The build and design of this product is second to none. Apple have outdone themselves with the magic section of this accessory for sure. The way the iPad Pro connects and then floats is actually pretty stunning and it's an amazing achievement in magnets. And once connected, it really does feel as sturdy as any laptop. There's next to no flex here as you might expect with this style of slim keyboard and the iPad feels anything but loose. It's built like a tank, which is good because coming in at a starting price of £299 for the 11 inch model, it's really expensive. It's pretty clear Apple are going after the people who really do want a laptop replacement from their iPads with the Magic Keyboard. I mean, look at it, I'd forgive you if you just thought this was a laptop. But for Apple to make that transition for people, they really need to nail the typing experience. And simply put, they have. The typing experience on the Magic Keyboard is utterly excellent. These aren't the unreliable butterfly keys that plagued the MacBook lineup for years. These are full scissor switches and they feel fantastic. There's plenty of travel, a satisfying click for each keystroke, and to top it all off, they're backlit too. The layout is small, especially on the 11 inch iPad Pro I have, but after a few typing sessions, you adapt to it easily. And despite that overall smaller size, it easily beats out my 2017 MacBook Pro on typing, but maybe that's an easy win. Sadly, Apple did leave out a function row for the keyboard, and I don't really mind this too much, but I do miss changing volume and screen brightness with a key press. I don't see why you can't map it to control and plus or minus, but perhaps it's something we'll see in a future model. To add even further to that laptop aesthetic, Apple have also included a USB-C port on the left side of the keyboard for charging, so you don't have any strange looking cable solutions if you're running low on juice. I really like this, but I don't like the fact that it can't handle data. So if you're looking to plug in an SD card reader or something similar, you've still got to go in directly to the iPad. There isn't much variety in viewing angles either once this is attached. It's either 90 degrees or 130 with some wiggle room in the middle, but what's here should work fine for most people. I haven't had any issues with the default 130 degree angle, and moreover, it elevates the iPad so it's closer to your face, which is a nice addition I didn't know I wanted. The only thing that isn't magic about this keyboard is the weight. This thing is thick and it adds significant heft to the iPad Pro. In fact, folded up next to my MacBook Pro, it's nearly as heavy and is actually thicker overall, which is something I didn't expect. Don't let that put you off though, it's a beast, sure, but by no means does it make it uncomfortable to carry around. I have to hand it to Apple with the trackpad, they knocked it out of the park. The implementation is so well done, it's almost a shock it's taken them this long to put one on an iPad keyboard. Physically, this feels just like a MacBook Pro trackpad, albeit just a smaller iteration of it. If you're coming from the massive trackpads of the MacBooks, it can take some getting used to, but once you're there, it feels totally normal. The software is where it shines though. Apple have done an amazing job of making the trackpad feel like a true bridge between touch control and pointer based control. The most useful feature is how the pointer will adapt and stick ever so slightly to buttons, icons or apps on the screen, which makes interacting with them way easier. The gesture controls are simple to use and once you get a hang of them, you can really fly through the interface. Switching, closing and swiping all feel very natural and translate well from Mac OS. A trackpad makes working with more intricate things much simpler too. Anything text-based is much easier to manipulate and controlling tools more accurately in apps like Lightroom is really nice to have. Overall, it's a solid experience and I think a lot of people will love using a trackpad to navigate the iPad Pro. So if it's all so great, why am I not sold on this product? Well, I actually find that the Magic Keyboard actively discourages me from using the iPad Pro as a tablet 
and encourages me to use it as more of a laptop. That's probably the point and really great for some people, but for me, it's not. I can sometimes almost forget that this is an iPad and see it as more of a toned down laptop. And that's not why I bought the iPad Pro. Also, using the Apple Pencil is just not very comfortable while the iPad is attached to the keyboard. You can obviously disconnect it, but then the iPad has no protection from the surface it's on, if that's something that concerns you. Interestingly, I don't get this with the keyboard folio case, and I think that's because you can pick it up and wrap it around the iPad and continue using it very easily as a tablet, whereas the Magic Keyboard requires you to disconnect it to get the true tablet experience. I know that's a wickedly minor thing to pick on, but it's something that's come up a lot for me. The other more simple answer to this is, the iPad Pro, as amazing as it is, still can't replace my laptop for my everyday work. I need access to Adobe's Creative Cloud for my day-to-day -day job, and I know that's coming soon to the iPad, but right now it's not here. And despite the excellent typing experience, incredible build quality, and perfect integration of the trackpad, I still find myself reaching for my laptop for most tasks. Finally, there's also the battery life to consider. As this keyboard doesn't take a battery, it draws power from the iPad. And while I'm really confident you'll still get through an entire day with this attached, it does noticeably drain the battery. People are obsessed with replacing their laptop with an iPad Pro. And I get it, I can see why the iPad Pro is a much nicer piece of hardware to carry around and to use than a laptop, and if you can do the job of that, then why not? This accessory is probably the biggest ever statement from Apple to try and get you to do that. It brings all the comforts of a laptop while still keeping the iPad Pro at the core of the experience. For people looking to completely ditch their laptop and just go fuller on the iPad Pro, then you're going to love this accessory. But for those of us that are still in that strange in-between where a laptop is still the default go-to for many tasks, it just makes the landscape more tricky and difficult to pick which one to go for. And if anything, it can make your workflow just that bit more complicated. So that rounds up my take on the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. If you enjoyed it, please do pop a like. And if you loved it, subscribe on the way out. That really helps me out. And if any of you out there are having a similar experience to me, then let me know in the comments below because I always love to hear from you guys. Anyway, I will see you all in the next one.